It's your boy Yak. Your boy T. And we're here with a very special guest, man. We're super excited to have him here. Um, y'all checked out the last podcast, and make sure you guys like, subscribe. If you're listening in, make sure you guys download these podcasts, man. It's a lot of stories coming through. Um, we have a very special person here, um, someone that we've met or I met a long time ago, and um, my boy's name is Edwin. My boy's name Edwin out here. Um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself even more and kind of like. Um, you know where his background stuff and like his talk about his background and where he's coming from for those that seeing the visual right now You guys can see um, my man has a lot of stories for sure to tell um, So we're super excited to have him here, man Let, Tell us a little bit about what's, what you got going on right now, man What's uh and start from the beginning? I guess you know, how did how was the your upcoming because I know you have a history in being previously incarcerated um, and obviously being affiliated as well So I kind of want to talk about you know growing up that first that first step being you know your childhood Yep. Um, well, my name is Edwin. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, well, everything started uh, with my mom coming over here to the United States. She migrated uh, from El Salvador. Uh, I was actually born here. Uh, and then because uh, of her uh, financial situation, she sent me back to El Salvador. So uh, that's how everything started. You know, uh, then I grew up over there uh, till I was 12. Then, uh, well, real quick, what age did you get sent back over there? I went. I was one Damn, year so old. you were a young oh, guy, okay. baby. Okay. Yeah, you so, didn't know uh, what was going on. I, I didn't remember nothing about here. And uh, well, uh, that's how everything started. Start hanging out with people, you know, start having my friends. Uh, it was something really normal over there to have. You'll see, you know, gangs everywhere, every corner. You know, people know somebody, there's somebody. And uh, yeah, pretty much, you know, start hanging out with the wrong crowd. Then, start, start, uh, starting off over there in El Salvador. In El Salvador. Then got uh, you. I got here. I got here in uh, Chicago. Uh, well, I landed over here. They had better hopes of me. of probably, you know, doing better. And uh, well, yeah, I was trying to do better. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of hard it's to stay happens, focused. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. I guess before before you even get into kind of your story here, I want to talk about kind of going to the Salvador. Yeah, it was yeah, like that sounds crazy. you're not in a different state; you're in a different country, a whole different part. I mean, at 12 years old, you already know what's happening. Like you already understand. Like your your mind is already thinking. Yeah. What was that like being out there? And is that where like you started getting yourself affiliated with the, with a specific gang and stuff like that? What was that like? Yeah, I had cousins. My my dad was from 18. Uh, so uh obviously i was from a rival gang uh at, then, at that uh, age already though uh i wasn't officially from them but uh i was uh, with them i was rolling with them and that's okay. our part like once that you roll it with them you consider basically yeah yeah you're gonna be into an hour later and uh and my dad was from 18 so uh he died when i was about probably nine nine ten uh wow. he committed a robbery uh in the wrong neighborhood which it was ours and uh he, he got killed by one of my homies, and I got killed by one of my homies. We were not really close to each other. I had my sister. Uh, he would deny us because he was in prison, actually, when my mom got pregnant for him. And, uh, um, yeah, I came over here. came over here, then uh, it's just uh, so much that I had in my head, uh, so much that I was trying to escape, that I ended up following me over here. And uh, pretty much uh, it got to a point where I felt like uh, probably my mom was never there dad wasn't there so it was easy for me to just lose focus on whatever i wanted to do in life yeah and uh yeah you know i start doing it i start doing it uh, so okay so real quick so at 12 years old you're in El salvador what ends up happening like what does your moms tell you or your abuelita tia what what how did they say you've been here forever you're about to go somewhere you're about to you know what uh my grandma i could always say uh, my grandma was somebody that I could always look up to. She was a really hard working woman. Uh, she always uh, put in me, you know, to be the best mm -hmm. I could and she tried her best. And I thank her a lot for everything I know nowadays because I, I would not starve, you know, and none of that. That's I right. know how to do my stuff. And uh, and she, I obviously, she, like she always told me, she always loved me, whatever I am, doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, she knew I had a lot, you know, I tried to come, uh, probably live a life with my mom. Uh, feel good, you know, I feel that love. Never had it. My mom was kind of like different, what I expected, than what I expected, but yeah. uh, um, nowadays, I already came all that, but 
at that point in life, uh, I just felt like uh, I was lost in life. And uh, yeah, it was, the more lost I felt, the more deep I, I went in it, you know? And and the, the key thing in the streets is like, the less you care about leaving, the more you're gonna grow in the streets, you know? Right. Damn. And, and um, it got to a point where I would just get out from my house where I was staying at and just not caring if I lose my life or not. You know, and that was a big decision when I tied in my face. I didn't want to have a, a choice of leaving or, or you know, dying. Yeah. So I, you, I would just... You committed. Done. You committed yeah. at that point. So I'm still... Exactly. I, I'm trying to get the timeline because I want to... That's I really want to touch on, like, when you made that decision to, to get inked up because obviously that's a true decision. And you said, I'm going to make this my permanent yeah. thing. Like, But, but even it. before that, so, so you come... From El Salvador at 12, you land with your moms. You reconnect with moms at that point? Um, no. She kicked me out. She kicked me out. You know, obviously, I was hanging out with the one crowd. It was kind of hard to to keep up with her uh, way and, of and, living life. And real quick, what city did you did you land in? Yeah, I landed in Hollywood, right here in LA. Oh, and, and it just so Gosh, happens man. that that's where there's a lot of mana at in Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. Did you, did you know that already going into it, that you were going to no. run into homies out here? No, it was just uh, something that happened. I uh, landed right there. And that is random. And actually, the clique that I, I, I was from, uh, it, it was there. And, and, um, and my, my cousins, they're from MS2. Mm. So it was kind of easy to just get back in the game. And, you were you know, just whatever. all around it. Like, you yeah. were just like. Yeah, I didn't even know I was going to land there. I did. And uh, then me and my mom got into it, you know. Uh, she kicked me out, whatever. She just said, you know what? I don't want to have nothing with you. I Basically, she told me, you know, what's that way for my life? So I felt really disappointed. You know, as a little kid, I, I left my house, like, when I was 13. Yeah. Uh, and from there, I, like, I promised her, you know, I step out, uh, one, one, uh, put one um, yeah. one foot out, and I'm never going to come back in. And she like, all right, you know. She you're, didn't you're care. She, like she said, you know, the family I got here, that's my family. And I accepted it, you know, I, I thought it was hard. I, I thought it was like, you know, I'm untouchable. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I was like, fuck it, you know, I left. 13 I left. years old. 13 years old. And I started getting into all type of trouble, fucking gun charges and all yeah. that. I just didn't give a fuck, you know. So you were in and out the halls already at 13? Yeah, I was uh, in and out. I was in and out and, and uh, thank God nothing ever happened to me, you know. Uh, I. I had a lot of experiences that were really bad where I right. thought my life was gonna be done. And at that time, I was just so cold bloody, you know? I didn't know myself, I didn't care where I sleep, I didn't care if I had a job or not. Yeah. I always had money, I knew my ways, I knew the streets, you know, and if I like something, it's gonna be mine, you know? And basically how I took it, it's my territory, whatever is in it, it's mine. And I just, you know, a lot of things that got me up there, it got me really up there. It was uh, not caring, you know. I, I will do anybody and and, uh, and anybody wanna fucking uh, put fear in me, whatever, is gonna have the opposite of it, you know. It's gonna, yeah, I'm gonna unleash that beast that is in me. Yeah. And all the anger, all the anger of not feeling that love, not having a mom and seeing people, you know. I got to be homeless, I got to be homeless. I was like uh, two, three months of homeless. And yeah, and, I didn't and have what, no what was that like? Me. Homeless meaning like you're just sleeping with the homies or, or uh, basically pad, pad, pad or pad. And then um, I got to sleep in the streets to the point where uh, they'll wake me up uh, Damn, from the garage. The streets, huh? Yeah, and then I would not shower for days and stuff like that, you know. And nowadays, you know, I, I used to see my mom. I, I remember seeing my mom a few times, mm -hmm. and and uh, and probably you know I seen her. And uh, I wanted that, uh, you know what, they come back home or whatever, you know, even though probably I was going to say no, you never know, right? But I feel like uh, probably I needed that uh, effort of, you know what, uh, giving me what I needed or never had. That never came by, you know, she so, never gave it to me. So how did that work? So you're, let's say you're posted up maybe at a liquor and you're, you see moms walk by, like going to go get mandado yeah. or going to yeah, go yeah, get Yeah, yeah, she'll see me. You know, you could straight tell when somebody, you and know, having had no sleep, uh, been sleeping in the streets, That's you know. That's crazy. And, yeah. and um, like I was telling my wife, you know, I, I told my wife, my wife knows me inside out and and she knows what I've been through and everything and and somebody that ain't been a, a key uh, to, to my life, you know. And, um, and uh, yeah, I see my mom a few times, you know. And uh, to this day, I let all that go, all the... All, all, all that uh, madness that I had in me, 
towards her because um, in reality, it was just consuming me instead of fi making her see something that I wanted to see, you know? I wanted for her to see that I wanted to be that, that kid for her and everything. And uh, that I, I will never ever be again, you know, because mm. I was growing and, and I was now no more a little kid. So, um, yeah, you know, and uh, it got to a point where uh, I would be like uh, late at night. And I remember I had points where I, I would break and I would be, I, I just start crying on my own and be like, where the fuck am I stay at now? You went out of places, you know, you, like you get tired of walking. Yeah. Gone. Everybody's, Everybody's in their house. Home. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'll be in the streets just thinking, where the fuck I'm going to be at now? Yeah. Where, who can I go kick it with? They get tired of kicking it. They get tired of being out there with you. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say I had some good friends back then, which now some of them are dead. Uh, they're doing life in prison. Definitely. But um, all I could say, you know, it got to one of them days where I was just, enough is enough, you know. Yeah. And, and I remember just saying, like, you know what, I'm not going to, I didn't got on my feet in a good way. I could not be proud of it, but I don't regret it. Because it was, and that, them times it was either me or them, and it was always, always gonna be me. And uh, yeah, I did it, left to right, left to right, you know, until I went up there, you know, and yeah, sooner or later I got cut up for stuff. And um, yeah, you know, so then I got on my feet, got my girl, whatever, and started getting in houses. I didn't care, I didn't care about a girl back then. I didn't care about, None of that, you know. I just, I was just living my life. I would look for excuses to get in a fire and leave, and um, yeah, you know, I just be with my homies. Yeah, they're doing a gang banger thing, you know. And I wanna, I wanna touch on that because okay, so real quick to bring back, when did you get, when did you get this? When did that happen? When uh, did you get? When I, like I was that? fighting life, I fought thirty-two years to life. Oh, I see. And how okay. old were you at that time? Yeah, I was um, eighteen. So oh, okay. Fred, so you're in and out the halls. You're sleeping in the street. The homies are like, you're like, fuck. You're one of, and I, I know, you know, I've I've had homies like that where they just they're the latchkey kids. Their mom, everybody else gets put in that gets caught from moms, and and there's the one homie that just he's like, fuck it, I ain't got no, you know, no moms, no pops. I'm just gonna do it. Um, so you you did all that up until 18. The moment you hit 18, you're facing life. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, before that, I had just got out. I was out for 28 days. Uh, just in and out the halls or the compound I, or, or no? Camp? I had just got out from a gun charge. I okay, did okay. sixty months um, because uh, something had happened with my homie, and uh, I took initiative on just going and you know, Damn. and you know what? And I got cut up between every any everything happened. But uh, and this is because you're young, right? I'm guessing that's why you're yeah. taking it because it's yeah. like I'm I'm under eighteen. Like, yeah. what's the worst that's gonna happen, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, I was um, underage. And then I did what I did, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I got cut up for it. You know, I could, um, like my homie told me, you know, I could take the charge, but uh, he had a little girl at that time. I didn't have nothing to lose. So I'm like, don't worry, you know, I'll take mm -hmm. the charge, you know. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. So I took the charge. I got cut up for a gun. Um, well, they which, gave me Which, months, real quick, so. which, oh, okay, okay, got yeah. you that much. Because I was going to say, that one doesn't carry that much time, the 32 to life. That's normally if you catch a hot gun or something. Somebody yeah. just tossed a hot potato in your lap and you're like, oh, no. shit. You know? No, okay. then, uh, so uh, I after that, I got out. Hot potato. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You see it a lot, like, hey. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Uh, well, yeah, I got cut up. Uh, I came back out. I was out for 28 days. And I was just doing me, you know, like always. I was just doing me, you know. And uh, I was trying to find myself. And oh, only, like, you know what, uh, even though probably I had her at home, after I found a home, I had a home. And that was had, with, uh, with baby moms at that point? Um, you no. Had already no, I had a that? different girl. And uh, okay. and uh, what happened was, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, so I, even though I had everything, not everything exactly, but uh, that I had somewhere to lay on and all that, mm -hmm. even though I, st I was still not happy. And, and uh, through this whole life, that I, uh, the years that I have lived so far, uh, what I, I know myself is that I, I was just battling, probably being alone, being alone, uh, feeling not important to, to nobody, probably to my grandma, but you always got the thing where, you know what, you wanna feel that love for mom, dad, and all that, and feel like, you know what, uh, you don't have to uh, beg for that, you get me? And, yeah. and, uh, and I think that was one of the main triggers that I had in my life what got me into drugs. Uh, I was doing 
drugs left to right. Whatever it was out there, I was just doing it, you know. Oh, and uh, crazy. and um, yeah. So uh, even though like that, I would still feel lonely. I would still feel uh, that I needed something. I was still in need of something that I, I couldn't figure out. So I will, I will not always sit there and fucking plan things to do in, in order to to get the anger out. And get out, and, and you know what? Let, let's go look for this person. Let's go look for this, yeah. and, and try not to always get into trouble. Always just so, so that came to, out like in the form of putting in work. You yeah. were just you were young, you were active, and you're just like fuck it. You exactly. know, let me let me, let me go. Yeah, and then life. I start getting cut up uh, with my own home. I start getting into it with my own home. Is I start, uh, hey, you know what? I well, I'm not naked either. You know, you want to come through? I'm here. You know, uh, I'm gonna take some of you guys too. You know. And, it's, it's just everything was just fucking with me, drugs, uh, whereas all the uh, lonely were to the point that I stopped giving a fuck where I was from, to what 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 I, I was representing, I was just against everybody. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I got my people, you got your people, you wanna come through, come through. You know, I, I, I would see cops, I had, I was always packing all the time, I had my gun on me. Yeah. There was and never no still day, before yeah. the tattoos. Before the tattoos, because even with the now with the fucking tattoos, it's even times ten. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then, uh, call it. Yeah, I will run from them and all that, you know. And yeah, they got me after twenty eight days. Uh, they got me days. for uh, yeah, they got me uh, for uh, attempted murder. They got me for intimidating my witnesses. They got me for a strong arm robbery. They got me for uh, criminal threats. They got me for uh, almost kidnapping. They got me uh, for... Uh, that's another story in itself. Yeah, it's what, so many it, stuff. Hey, okay, so this is what got you into that final last straw, right? Yeah. That last straw. What happened? Why did you get charged with all that? Well, you know, one thing lead to another. Uh, then uh, I got out, and uh, my way of seeing things was, um, hey, you know what? If the hood tells you to do something, you're going to do it. You yeah. get me? And uh, if not, I'm here to to press on you to do it, you know? I'm the one that enforce it. And, and, um, and yeah, I got to have my the power on my click, everything, to have my people. And, and I'm like, you know what? I came out, here it comes, you know? I present this to you, then you guys are next. Hey, you know? do you feel it was because you were the only one that, that or maybe not the only one, but one of the ones that, that didn't have, you know, that steady household like the rest of the homies, and they're probably, you know, they, they didn't, you were you had to really live it. Does that make sense? 24-7. You never yeah, really yeah, escaped yeah, it living yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the main things. You were always there. You were yeah, always that, ready. That. Yeah. I could never, you know what, my house was right there in the Damn. middle of the hood. So anything happened, hey, you know what, this is going on. You're the go-to guy. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm game. like, okay, I got no choice but just yeah. to come out, you know, and, and do it. And, for me, it was more like adrenaline and, and the madness that I want, always wanted to let go and that, that got me there, you know? Yes. And, and, um, and yeah, that, I, I think that's one of the main things that make me do so much stuff that uh, I always tell my wife, you know? I was constantly at times pass through those spots that happen and I'm like, and I remember it. I don't always say it to my wife, but uh, I don't like to regret it because then I, I believe like it might come back to me, yeah. you know? and, and um, it's so crazy now, you know, and uh, that's where I'm gonna get to uh, later in the story that how things change in life is so crazy because what you used to do to other people, you know, and, and what you always used to be looking for, then you're in a situation where your life is always in danger, you know, and uh, and you always gotta write it out. But uh, yeah, so after everything happened and um, ended up catching this case, uh, just to add in more stuff, well, I went with something simple, which it was strong robbery, uh, strong mom robbery, and uh, just to add in more stuff, start adding more stuff, and uh, next time I know I keep going to court, I keep going to court, I keep adding stuff, and, and this is all I, right here in LA County, LA County, and, and it's and I was I remember uh, going to court, and once they, they did uh, put the 32 to life, and then uh, had gun charges. Once you got a, a big case, they start dropping the little stuff. They got you for yeah. something big, you yeah. know? And, and, uh, I, didn't know that. and I, I went back. I went back to, I remember going back to the dorm and and, uh, and, and I remember getting in the shower, you know? And, and I was just so stuck, you know? I was just stuck taking a shower. Just in my mind, everything just thinking, you know? Thinking like, 
damn, I'm, I'm through now. Yeah. This yeah. is it, you know. So I ended up, I just, um, uh, well, I keep going to court. I what what court was it? CCB? Uh, CCB. Yep. Oh, it was okay. CCB. I took the court all the way. Uh, I think a uh, few courts before uh, I took my deal, I was, uh, the first offer they ever gave me was uh, 16 years with a strike. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, you know what? I waited so long. I'd rather lose and come back. You know, I got a good chance. Yeah. Then uh, the reason why I thought about it like that was because the person that, um, that was going to court and, and testify against me, I had already sent my homies over there. So I sent them to intimidate the witnesses. Oh, and, and yeah, sure enough, they found out. The moment you send, do that, now you're really fighting life, totally unrelated to what you were in there for. Yeah. What you like, uh, like it, it, you could say it if you want. No, I'm what glad you, you said that you it was you got caught for it. It was already on, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I already yeah, took my time it, for it, time. and uh, um, the re this is how it happened, right? So how it happened was my homies got cut up in a, uh, in a robbery, and I was just waiting for a girl at that time to pick me up. And Sancha, uh, real quick, you know, <laughs> Sancha. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I I had my girl around that time, you know, and, and, and um. And what happened was, uh, I seen them, I seen, I seen everything go down, you know, and they had already told me, but I didn't want to be part of it. Okay. But I was the one with the gun. So they tried to do it with, on their own. And I seen it go down in front of me and they got stuck. The person wasn't trying to give nothing. Up. Then you got people coming out, you got everything coming out. And, and, and then I, I'm like, fuck, I didn't have no choice, but like, fuck these motherfuckers, you know, I gotta go now. Yeah. I went down the stairs, and it was so easy for me to just pull the strap and be like, hey, let it go, man, and all this is it. Then, uh, obviously, once you move somebody certain steps, it's considered kidnap. And I moved the person a few, time, <laughs> few times around, you know, because I was just try, trying to have a view like, of the person. Do you mean, like, simple, like, hey, get over here, move I think it's here, like, like five like... steps beyond your will. Yeah. Be, what? You're, you're, you're considered yeah. kidnapping. It's, yeah, be, so. be, it's not, it's do you not have your to will. Do you touching were... them? Like, do you have to be, like, physically moving yeah, I don't know. like even being told like I, I don't know I don't really know but uh Just I remember I was I always wanted to have the person in view because I didn't know what she doing and it was a girl and and uh, I didn't want to be part of it and out of this I didn't got not even a penny out of it you know and, and obviously it was two other homies doing it and uh, um and what happened was um uh, now everything happened, whatever, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, they got away. I still uh, went just to the next street, waited for the person to pick me up. And uh, um, they were, I think like, I want to say like a week, a week after, they were looking for me. They were looking in my uncle's pad, in my mom's pad. Damn. And they're like, hey, they're looking for you. What the fuck did you do? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I haven't done shit, you know? And they're like, whoa, they're looking for you. Better watch out. Start going in a run, and I start hiding. So the day they got me, it was so funny, right? Because in my mind, some stuff happened before that that make me just go in a zone where I'm like, "Hey, this motherfucker's really gonna give me life for this." Yeah. And and, uh, and I I remember having uh, my gun and a whole fucking bag of bullets. In my mind, I was like, you know what? I I'm gonna go all out with these motherfuckers. No with the hood uh, Yeah, with the hood I'm like, man, I'm gonna let these motherfuckers yeah. have it. And uh, and I had the whole thing right. And the day that it happened, I guess they were they've been looking for me. They they told me everything the day I got busted. They told me everything everything that I did that day. So they had been watching you. They been watching the cars, you, underground, yeah. undercover cops, everything. The whole yeah, they they be just uh, waiting for the right moment because they don't know what I got. They don't gotcha, want to get me where there's gotcha. people around me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know. So that day, I remember I went to go eat. And uh, the person that was there told me, hey, you know what? This is the first time I see you so calm. And I probably already felt that mm -hmm. I was gonna go in, you know? And, uh, and I'm like, oh yeah. I was Crazy just enjoying how you my feel food, it, huh? yeah. It, it's you that know. feeling, yeah. yeah. And, and I felt that thing where I just felt like a peace, but at the same time, like uh, agony in me, like something, you know? And yeah, I got busted, you know? And uh, right when I went back, how, I, wait, I, how, I was- Real quick, how did they pull up? Like, uh, you know, in the movies it's like, Edwin. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, no. this, this is a like... whole different thing. So let me take you back one day before that. Uh -huh. So uh, 
I remember we we're, were tagging all over the hood, you know, okay. and a day before. Uh, so uh, what happens, it's so funny, right? Because uh, I, I were tagging whatever they call the cops, the cops, and even though they had surveillance on us, whatever, and they were trying to get me, uh, they, they, I got away, right? I start running from the cops, and, and um, I seen a dumpster. So first thing that I thought, I went into a building, jumped myself into a dumpster, closed the fucking lid, and I'm like, I'm safe. I heard the cops' cars like go everywhere. While you're in the dumpster? Yeah. That's and and uh, I was so drugged out, I, I probably passed out. Passed out, I woke up uh, early in the morning, and uh, there was a lady with a little girl, right? I could hear <laughs> that. She threw a bag of trash, and it landed around. I'm like, what the fuck? And, and, uh, and yeah, and that woke me up. So I went, changed, and I came back to the same spot. That's when it went. I went to eat, whatever. So when I, I, I was hiding in a, in a building, and once I came back to the building, uh, I, I was waiting for the door to be open. But when he opened, I stand up, because I was smoking a cigarette, but I was facing the street. I, I, I turn around, there's a door, and I just see nothing but the cops just pulling their guns out. They had shotguns, they had uh, nine millimeters, and Steve, motherfucker coming yeah. out of the building like, Freeze. We'll be looking for you, motherfucker. Like, put your hands up, you know? That's they good. got me and, and they threw me against the car, pushed me, all this shit. You know, they, you know, they mad or these motherfuckers be looking for yeah. me. They got me and, um, yeah, they took me in. I already knew at that point I was done. Yeah. I went to the glass house. People were stressed out. They didn't mm -hmm. want to eat. I was just eating. I was just, I know I'm done. You, you know? hadn't been to the county prior to yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I've been to the county. I've been busted a few times. I didn't have the worry like other people had, like, I want to get bailed out. I just knew I was okay, done. Okay, got, you, got I, I, you. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to eat. You already know how county is. It's like, you know, it's peanut fucking butter and apples. Peanut butter yeah. soup. You're yeah, trying to get it. About that, yeah, you know? peanut butter stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy my food now that I'm yeah, here. Glass house still, you know, all right. And uh, yeah, I, I went to go about fight the case. I got, uh, at the end of the day, a court. They gave me the first deal. I will keep going. I refused it. So uh, you you refused a sixteen with a strike. Yeah, that's what they offered. No L though. Sixteen no, with no, a strike. Yeah, no L. Okay. So uh, in my mind, I was like, because I sent people to intimidate the witnesses. Uh, oh, I'm, I should be good, you know. So one day passed, two days. I think we got to like the seventh day, and the witness wouldn't show up. They couldn't find of, it. Of trial yeah. or premium yeah. or something. Uh, premium. Yeah. yeah okay. Premium. So uh, uh, they couldn't find it. So uh, they're like, oh, well, we're going to go 1 to 10. If we can find it, well, we're going to have to dismiss it. And, and, and real quick, um, prelim is basically all everybody has to present whatever evidence they have at that point. So if you got a case, both sides, the, the what do you call it, the plaintiff and the, and the person trying to prosecute you, which is a DA, they ha if they have something on you, they have to present it in order for the case to proceed. So in prelim, they'll say, I have this many witnesses. So it's not trial. I'll have this many witnesses. I'll do this. I'll do and then the judge will decide, you know what? We got a case. We're moving forward with it. So a lot of people so cross their fingers. Enough, and that's what he's saying. Lying. At day seven, no witnesses still. He's, you're probably like, yeah, yeah. like I'm, uh, it, it's smooth selling, you know, like. Yeah. So they would cut, they would drop all charges. If nothing. prelim, they don't present wow, anything. Yep. Crazy. I would walk out of the door and um, what happened was, so the, this is how fucked up it is, right? Because I had my homies pressing on the persons. So the yeah. persons, they had obviously had kids. And uh, the fucked up thing about it is like, I know I could have had action if I would have lost because, uh, the person didn't appoint at me on their own. Once they found it, found found the person, they 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 basically told her like, hey, you know what? Either you go testify, take we could take your kids. Do you want your kids to be oh, taken away? Man. Start yeah. threatening the person, right? Mm -hmm. And I know this because my homies will always talk to the person, be like, you know what? You, you know, we already know what to do. But once the cops uh, got in hold of the person, they didn't let go and start praising her. Obviously, it got to their head, and uh. Once I see the person go back, uh, the judge asked the person, hey, uh, do you see the person that did it here? And, uh, she, did, she didn't say no. She said, no, I don't know. I don't see it. Obviously, I let my, get, my hair grow, everything grow. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. And, um, Glasses and everything. Oh, yeah, so oh, you were oh, really that, you know, I, was, I was trying naturally to... Naturally, you know, like, like, hiding. Bro, yeah, right? yeah, I was hiding. I, I let my hair grow, everything, right? And um, was that, a, that was on purpose? 
It was on purpose. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, people start wearing glasses like, during yeah, trial. Or during trial. Not. <laughs> and then I didn't have nothing visible. I had a tear. I had two tears. And, and I had my mustache. Uh, so I, I let my mustache grow. And, and uh, the cop said, like, yeah, there he is. So the cop pointed at me. So uh, then she didn't have no choice but then pointing at me, too. You know. Yeah. And uh, So she pointed at me. Then uh, I was done with that one. Then uh, they tried to get me for um, kidnapping there, so they dropped that one. Then attempted murder, they, they got me for that one. So they, they gave me at the end eight years. Uh, eight years, I ended up doing eight years with, uh, I think, one strike. So, so what I, they give you, like 10 eight, or something? No, they gave me eight with a strike. And you maxed out on the eight? I maxed out on the eight, yeah. Damn, I maxed okay. out on the eight. I got caught with phones. I got caught uh different stuff and all that. You know? So I maxed out on the eight. So they start dropping stuff to different... Um, low levels and um yeah i got i got away with one of them and, and uh well i thank god you know i did absolutely so uh other than that i will not be here you know i got another yeah. chance at life and even though i okay i took my eight years i went in there i was still lost but obviously you know you're always gonna try to get away you know try to come back out uh i went in there so uh, you lost. went in there at what, like 20, 21? How long? No, that's like I a was, two year uh, case, three yeah, year case? I was like uh, about to be 20. Okay. okay. About to oh, be 20. So um, I went in. I went in and uh, um, I, I was lost just doing me, you know. Fucking uh, people, would, you know, who need to get checked. I raised my hand, you know, check them, whatever. Just doing drugs in there and hang out with my homies. Until, you know, probably. Uh, Something changed when I, it was to the last of my term, and uh, that's when I uh, actually met my wife. I met my wife through uh, through my homie, and um, I came back out, you know. So she waited for me. Uh, we seen each other, and I was at MCRP. MCRP, uh, I had to go back, you know. I just it was too much for me. Just seeing freedom out there, and I couldn't go. It's just, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. So I fucked it up, and I went back. So I went back, and um. A year, I think a year and some change, I came, I came back out. And um, I was with my wife. I married my wife. Uh, we had kids. And uh, that that changed a lot, you know, changed a lot. But even though like that, through her pregnancy and everything, it was not enough. It's like, uh, okay. Uh, like I, meaning not enough to stop the, the, you know, some of your stuff, the madness that was going on? Um, I, I want to say in, not enough in a way to, to make me realize uh, what you that, uh, yeah, you know what? That I got something like this that is uh, this is yeah, this for. is what's gonna be my my main thing that's gonna keep me out of everything yeah. uh, later in life. So uh, at that point, I was still doing drugs. I came back out. I, I was over for a long time and still no tattoos. I, oh no, you know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did, wanna. So. so that that happened when you were serving your. And and the reason we I bring that up is because that's a fucking big big step. Yes. Yeah. Or or a commitment, yeah, I should yeah. say, because now you know that. Like the shooting, right? There, there's no way. Now they know. They can know you a mile away. There's no getting out of it. Now you're hot. Now you're all those things come with it. And I'm sure maybe you were thinking about it or not. But I know when you're young, you're not thinking about that stuff, yeah. right? So, yeah. So, this, I, I got all this. Uh, I started getting more, more tattoos when I uh, got into reception and uh, prison. As I hit in prison, I was still lost, you know. So, uh, I didn't care. So, at that point, I was still uh, got to that point in life where I'm like, you know what? Uh I just don't want to keep going through this, you know. It's just too much for me. And, and I got to the point where uh, I, I quit on everything. I just say, you know what, I, I'm a tattle on my face, and whatever comes, comes, you know. Yeah, and, so you even even in prison, you just went full-blown. Yeah. That's right. it, man. I, just, I give up. I'm just going to go with this life. Yeah, that's like before it. I had a little MS, and uh, that's why I shaded in because uh, I had a little one, and the only way of uh, making a bigger one was to cover the the, big, the little one. You yeah. know? So, so I made a big one, and I uh, shed it in, and I wanted to be visible. You know, I wanted to be visible, and I want people to know what it means. So uh, you know, I'm gonna spell it out in my forehead. Spell it out in my forehead. I did my own patterns, and you know. I was gonna say that. that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and for me, I feel proud of what I am and who I am, and, and what I was. You know, because. That made me what I am now and they, and uh, people might look at me, but they don't know how responsible, how lovable of a dad I could yep. be to my kids. Yep. Uh, and, and that's my thing, first um, thing that I, I always do, you know, put my kids first uh, and 
If it's anything left, okay, it's for me, you know, but my yeah. kids always come first. And and, uh, and uh, people probably judge me by the way I look, but yep. they, they don't know me better. And, and uh, I always walk with, with my head high because I know, you know, who I am and who I could be. So I, I don't fear them uh, talking. I heard a lot of uh, comments or people look at me weird. And uh, I go to places that they think I'm a steal something. And I always like to prove people wrong, but by uh, by doing otherwise than what I what they think, you know, because that that's a, a joy for me to prove see them, them wrong, uh, yeah, 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 to prove them wrong because it's like uh, don't let uh, the way I look determine, uh, you know, uh, the way you're gonna look at me because you don't know me better, you don't know how good I could be or what got me here, you know. But it's something I know for sure is like you could really regret what you're saying or whatever, you know, and. Uh, yeah, so anyways, I, I met my wife. I met my wife, and, and uh, got, she got her pregnant. Uh, got her pregnant. Through the time, she struggled a lot, which I mm -hmm. gave her props for it because she, she put up with a lot of my stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, so uh, I, I got to the point, you know, where uh, we started getting into it. Cops would come home. They took me in. They would let me out. Then I got into my neighbors and stuff like that. And uh, I will have a job, you know, I will always, since I came out, I had a job. Okay. Uh, that, that, uh, that's one of the things, too. Uh, uh, tattoos do, doesn't stop you at all. So, okay, so so real quick. So after the eight and a half, you, you already have the tattoos. I had the tattoos. Okay, so you get out, you do eight and a half, you went everywhere, reception. What would you hit, level fours, level twos? Uh, and I had then, level four, and then doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah. Okay. I went down to level three, and uh, I got level four points. And all that, so yeah, oh, I got my tattoos. It sounds, like a, it sounds like a video game. What's reception? And what 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 do you mean by level four? Is there a level? Uh, yeah, level three. Uh, let's say for example, it's like uh, you high risk, but not that much. And, oh, okay. Uh, and uh, if you uh, uh, let's say for example, uh, what you call it, of uh, um, validated gang member that you know or you you part or uh, affiliations and all that. Obviously, you're gonna go to level four, or is there anything that happened, you. You're gonna be, um, you could be accused of it, or you could be an influence in, in prison. So obviously, all that counts, and, and you start getting points, you start beating up people, you get points, you go to level four until you ended up uh, um, in lockdown, you know, and cages, and all that. You go to jar and cages because you can't be with all the population, wow. and um, it's different, you know. And then uh, the mm -hmm. the fucked up thing about prison is uh, at that time it was still uh, SNY. Uh, trying to come to GP and all that. Uh, so they will send you, I remember with this time, they sent me to, uh, M, uh, it was uh, CMC East West. Or, or something or like was that. was it East? I know the three yard was, was yeah, yeah, back in the day. And then what happened was, um, it, it was all bad. So I got there, and obviously they tried to, you know, hey, you should stay here, whatever, <laughs> right through the door. And I'll be far away. Yeah. And I was starving, right? Because they don't give you nothing at all. Nothing, nothing. So they give you only the lunch, whatever you got coming. So and real quick, so from reception, you went to CMC? Uh, no, or they tried no, to send no. you to CMC? Uh, yeah, I went oh, all okay. over the place. I okay. went... Uh, no, they really had you bouncing everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there. I was Ironwood. I was um, Sentinela. I was in uh, Wasco. I was in... Uh, uh, I ended up in Tehachi P. I ended up in... Um, how was it? Oh, that's a good little. Uh, Iron, yeah. I think I just said Ironwood and Man, all that. You were on so, road trips. You were on yeah, road trips left I, and right. Yeah, <laughs> I was left to right, you know, and uh, and yeah. So all that, you know, I ended up getting out. I ended up getting out, and uh, they gave me a chance for MCRP. I was behaving good for, yeah, I think, cool, cool little minute. Went, I was already maxed out. Where, so where was was that at Amity? Right there on Grand. Amity. Or? I was okay. in Amity. Yeah. yeah, I was in Amity, and uh, it was so uh, it was cool. The place is pretty cool. It was just um, too much freedom. Too much freedom and uh, out there to, to not, I uh, know. Took advantage of it. Yeah, you know, I just, like, you know, start fucking it damn. up. But obviously, it was a good experience. I'm not going to lie. It was a good mm -hmm. experience. Um, I started going out to, to visit my wife, you know, and all that. Right, you know? So I tried it. Because um, eight and a half is still a stretch, man. Like, oh, not yeah. only do you think you're ready for it, but eight and a half, as soon as you touch, you start smelling the trees, the... The scene, you know, whatever. You're like, oh, now I can cook my own food, the laundry, trees. <laughs> oh, I, th I thought you were going to say sink. I was like, no, you know, you're probably like, damn, I thought I was ready for it, but I feel a little funny, you know? Oh, yeah, no, no. And then there you got um, uh, SNY's there, which you got. Uh, At you know, the, what's yeah, it so it's kind of fucked up, you know, but 
Anyways, I went to that prison and, and that was a fucked up get down because they'd send you out there knowing that you gotta go take off from people. So I went out there and the cops tell you, you know, they send you one by one so it doesn't become like a, um, a melee or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, so I go out there and they're like, you already know what you gotta do. Either you stay or you go, you know. And, the cops um, tell you that? Yeah, they know. They That's know. fucking crazy. That sounds they like know. something the homies would tell you. The yeah, cops no, know I, the deal. Hey, already, they're Hispanic, huh? you know. Hey, like, hey, look, I know what you gotta do. You know, you know what you gotta do. It's like either you stay, or you go. You know, so obviously, you know, I'm like I start getting ready, start doing my burpees, everything. I'm like getting myself pumped up. I'm like, Cause yeah, you go that. out there not knowing this motherfucker might have uh, straps out there. You know, they're gonna yeah. get. They're you. used to it too. Yeah, because yeah. they know it. they're new. New bodies out there, so you might come and fight them. You never know who you're gonna pick. So obviously, I just start rushing, and and uh, I went through the yard. I see the blacks. I see this. I see I see the homies by by the handball court. I'm like, okay, I'ma go, and I went for it. You know, first guy I seen, I'm like, hey, your homie. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a homie. Fuck it, and I start taking wait, off wait, on the guy. Wait, you tell me you walked in, you're like, you looked at somebody, you said. Yeah, I'm fucked this world. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah, anyone, the first anybody. dude. Yeah, that's the way you and I get out, get out of the yard, you know. So, uh, what? Yeah. So, uh, uh, long story short, so the guy, you know, he told me he was a homie. Start taking off on the guy, take off on the guy. They send me to to the um, to the do, hole. Do any of them start jumping in? I always wondered. Like, is no. there, or is it too fast? Are the cops already on yeah, it? They're already on it. Like, uh, for example, they they say on the speaker, mm-hmm. okay, whatever, you know, coming out. And um, they're already kind of surround you, but it, they okay. give you a cool little minute. Okay, get what you got, you know. Now we come, you know, and they start pepper spraying you and all that. So, uh, yeah, so they got to me. They sent me in. They pepper spray me or whatever. And uh, I was in the cages, I believe, like for two months, waiting for to get transferred. I got transferred and I ended up going to Ironwood, where I spent my last three years. And um, it was really cool right there, you know. It was, it was chill, and. Uh, and from there, I, I pulled up from there. I went to Amity. I came back from Amity, and I pulled up from there. Um, so when you caught the violation at Amity, where'd they send you to finish off your violation? Uh, at the same prison that you sent me. Right back yeah. to Ironwood, huh? And you got Damn. motherfuckers right there. Like, yeah, oh, they're like, yeah, you I back? Thought you yeah. I thought you were gone, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... Uh, you, yeah. Real, you had a gave everything away. Yeah, Your yeah. TV's gone. Yeah, everything. everything was gone, you know? Everything was gone, and they're like, oh, okay. And I, I thought I was going to make it through. And nah, Damn. there I was. I was back, and they're like, "Fuck you, back so fast." And I'm like, they're like "Yeah, you know, send me back." So um, I had already gave my shit up. So <laughs> yeah, I had to buy it again. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife was, you know, gave me putting on, yeah, putting, putting the books. money so I could buy another one. But other than that, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, then yeah, so real, real, did that make you um give you like any idea of? Or make you rethink it. Like, fuck, I was just free. I fucked up. Now I'm back in here. Oh, yeah, you feel it. You feel yeah, it, right? You definitely like, feel it, you know? Because uh, I was like, fuck, you know, I was just out there. You kind of start stressing about things you could do out there that you mm-hmm. can't do in prison. And yeah. you get locked every day. When uh, over there in Amity, you could get out of the door anytime yeah. you want. You could smoke in Amity. Well, at that time, you could. And in prison, it's like you got to buy little sacks to smoke, you know? Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, everything was good, you know, and uh, I, I wasn't that bad either. So I started working in the kitchen. That got me through it. And uh, it would keep me, you know, focused on getting out. And uh, yeah, thank God I did. Uh, that, that's uh, when I started living with my wife. My wife was my main support. And uh, through all the struggle, you know, um, where we started at to where we're at now, I want to say that uh, we accomplished a lot. And we are, we're still accomplishing more as it goes, you know, and, and I'm so proud of myself, proud of my wife always putting up with my stuff. Uh, but like I was saying, you know, when I had, uh, had my wife pregnant, it was not enough for me to realize uh, what responsibility it was mm. and, and uh, to let things go. So my wife will always tell me, you gotta let things go because right. uh, what happens is, uh, you keep holding that against your mom and everything that happened to you when you were, uh, you know, just a little kid. Cause when I was in El Salvador, you know, uh, I grew up with my, my grandma and everything. And I will sell in the buses and the, what we call colonias, which is like little towns over there. Mm-hmm. And um, and all that struggle that I went through out there, it, it kind of make me feel, you know what? I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, uh, feeling the love that I, I thought I was gonna get. So 
obviously, you know, things changed for me. Uh, my wife helped me out, let things go. I start, uh, I stopped hanging out with uh, my homies. Little by little, start like doing me, you know, and I start getting on my feet. I start getting a job. We actually going to the job, you know. What was that like trying to get away? Because it's not easy, especially when you have this going on. What was that like trying to get away? Like, well, to this day, I'm not gonna lie to you. They call me here and there, you know. But yeah. um, one thing is talking to them, and another thing is including yourself in something that hey, I'm a goal standing. Big difference, standing. yeah. Because like, like I told my wife, I don't see myself standing no more saying, hey, you know what, those streets are mine, when in reality they're not. Um, I don't see myself like that no more. I don't like to dress like a like gambler no more. Uh, I just totally hate it, you know, because I feel more decent when I dress right, even though my tattoos say otherwise. It makes me feel, you know what, I, I, I'm not a part of the life no more, you know, and even though if you see me like that, I don't care, you know, because I know I'm not. So um, I dress casually now. Were there uh, co- were there consequences for pushing yourself away? Uh well, you know what? Uh, probably they, they they understand sometimes, you know. But uh, you can never lose that 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 um, communication because it's vital uh, for my life. And the way I see it, I got my tattoos. I live in in uh, my enemy's neighborhood, you know, and. Wow. Uh, I that see has them. to be tough, man. Every yeah. day I see Cause, them. Uh, yeah. I know even if the little youngsters see you and you're like, yeah, I don't even fuck around no more, dog, whatever. You just never know. Nowadays it's a whole, you know, you got little Edgars that, that who knows, little man. Edgars. Those are the fucking dudes, you know. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Think yeah. about that. How, now, before it was bald head, now it's Edgars yeah. that are yeah. up on you, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyways, um, I see them every day, right? And, and uh, like I tell my homies, you know, and they know where I live and everything. Even though I'm not there with them, doesn't mean, um, hey, I'm going to deny you guys 100%. But uh, they know that uh, I have moved on, you know. They know I got my family. I got my homie, you know, he's right now fighting life. He actually just bit one. And uh, um, he knows, you know, uh, that life for me probably been done. And uh, even though I support him, you know, I'm like, hey, you know what, here goes, you know. You know, get some soups or whatever. He knows uh, probably I'm not what I used to be, you know, because he knows me from back then. And uh, yeah. and uh, like I told him, you know, I'm here. I don't want to, I don't lose contact because you never know what about something's going on with me or I feel threatened, you know. I need to pull a string. I could pull that string and get people over here. Yeah. So for the way and, I and think. And I think that a lot of it too is a lot of people don't understand that, that it doesn't even start off as a gang a lot of the times. It starts off as childhood friends. Yeah. Those are dudes you went to elementary to high school with, you kicked it with before you got jumped in, before you started banging, before. So it's a, it's a, they're your brothers, a camaraderie outside of that, you know? Exactly. And, and people that you could, um, that probably think, you know, okay, they got my back, you know, something happens to me, they're going to run after me. I don't want to say all the time it's like that, but you get to find people that actually is going to back you up to the fullest, you know? Right? Yeah. Like my homies, uh, fighting life right now, I could say, uh, I trust them with my life, you know? We've been there for each other, and I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, but like I tell you, you know, I don't lose contact with them for the same reason because uh, I like to have strings that I could pull, and I know they're gonna answer me, you know. And uh, um, that's the thing where uh, I'm like, you know what? Uh, something happens to me, they know I was here or this and that. But uh, I- I'm far away from that life. I enjoy being with my kids, you know. You so, know? so is your wife uh, like she's up on game? She knows that when you can't go certain places with those tattoos. Uh, you know or... what? I go everywhere. Yeah. I, I don't limit myself on going anywhere at all. You know. Yeah, I found trouble, but I don't limit myself because uh, I usually don't go out. Okay. I don't go out unless it's with my family. We going somewhere, or we gotta do something. If I really gotta do it on my own, I go do it on my own. But other than that, uh, I always go out with my family, and. Uh, so far, I think uh, I've been looking around pretty good because I always try to, if I see danger, I try to avoid it, come back later or whatever, you know. But uh, if I got to go, I go, and regardless of the consequences, it's like, oh, well, I deal with them after, right? So, yeah, um, uh, my wife is not it's not that it's on game, but uh, if, if she sees some danger, she lets me know ahead of time, oh, watch out, you know, this and that. Uh, she tried to look after me a lot and... and um, 
and she's always worried, constantly worried about, hey, you know what, like something might happen to you, or the kids could be in the car. Nowadays, people don't give a fuck. Yeah. They shoot in the in the car. They do a shootout. I got my kids in the back. They're not gonna see my kids in the back for trying to get me. They're gonna get my kids, and then what? You know, and, and uh, getting me is one thing, and then getting my kids because my kids they don't want nothing. Yeah. You know, and, and that's one of my main worries sometimes. And, and I try to keep my kids visible when I see I'm in in a, somewhere I don't supposed yeah. to be, so they they get aware of uh, I'm with kids. You know, thank God nowadays. You know, uh, I found a good job. I got I got uh, somebody to support me to the fullest. I got my kids, mm-hmm. they my everything, you know, and uh, and my wife, you know, that I will always try to do different stuff. And one thing for sure that I always like to do is get out of LA. LA is good, good. Yeah, good. it's nothing but trouble and it's no peace at all. Anywhere yeah. you go around the city, it's no peace, you know, and uh, it's always something getting worse, getting worse, and getting worse. So I try to get out of LA as much as I can and uh, always go out to different places. Uh, spend time with my kids, mm-hmm. with my wife, and, and it's so fun, you know. Nowadays, um, spending time like that that I, before I didn't realize it was so so good, you know, and to enjoy this life <laughs> because before uh, those streets which is everything I had, and my wife, my kids make me change my whole perspective of life. Wow, that's then good. nowadays, you know what? Uh, I see homeless. I see this. Uh, uh, before me and my wife used to uh, go out giving food out. My wife works with, with veterans, you know, and uh, she gets them house and everything. We kind of like got the same thing. They like to help, you know, donate clothes and this and that. We're looking for people. Oh, do you need a blanket and a jacket? And my wife see me, you know, take out my jacket and give it to a homeless person when before I would not take out shit, you know. I'm like, I will take your shit if I have to. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and, and now really things that. change so much, yeah. you know, that, uh, that uh, now my wife is like, and she see me, I, I, I took off my shirt one time and I gave it to homeless because he was with a bag on it. It's crazy. Wow. You know, and I'm like, I can't let that guy just be like that, you know? I'm like, took it off again. Do, do you think it's because now what I feel like you're saying is the dip, one of the biggest differences, now you have somebody to care for and likewise, somebody that cares for you. Exactly. And I think during the whole story, you were kind of emphasizing that, that you never really, you always wanted somebody to be on top of you or somebody to be like, hey, can I go, you know, home? Yeah. Can I do that? You didn't have that. And now that you have that family support system that you created, um, I think that's fucking made a hell of a difference, it sounds like. You know what I mean? A big difference. A big difference. Uh, actually, uh, once I let go of everything that was holding me back, I was able to move forward mm-hmm. and, and and look clearly what I really wanted to be and, and where I was at in life that I wasn't really uh, paying attention to or, or being appreciated for. Because... Um, uh, the moments that I, they almost took my life away or whatever, I didn't see it so clearly like I see it now. Yeah. You know, that uh, now I could see, you know what, I know where I want to be in five days, uh, five, five years from now, I mean. And, uh, That's crazy. And, and uh, that I, I'm so thankful. I, I thank God all the time, you know, and I believe God is greater, you know, and, and the main thing to always do is just not give up. Not, do not give up. Do, don't ever lose focus. Uh, look for something that is gonna hold you down all the time to hold you down that is always gonna give you that motivation to always get up and be like you know what i need to do this and and how would you tell somebody that's got out or whatever how do they find that because it's different for everybody that little thing is different for everybody i'm sure Uh, you had like a step by step on kind of how you did it i understand that that, uh, when we get out when i got out i thought i'm like you know what i'm ready for to do a, Mm -hmm. a, a good life which i wasn't ready because I thought, okay, I'll get a job so easy like this. I start getting paid. I get a house and this and that. But then it's more more than that. I start fucking up my credit. I start doing all this, right? And uh, and nowadays, it's like credit is everything. Uh, and then you don't get a house so easy like that. You got a record. You don't got no, no. Okay, where you where did you live like three years from now, you know? And like, well, I was in prison. I'm like, well, I can't accept you, you know? You do got a stable job. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Oh, if you don't get paid enough, how the fuck are you going to pay the rent? Right, and, and all that. Um, so it's more to it than uh, probably getting the resources that you need. Because there's a lot of resources that you could get uh, to probably, okay, you get a home, uh, then save your money, get a place, get a stable job. Um, uh, start losing um, your, your bad influence. That, that's one of the main things too. Uh, start losing all the bad people that you hang out with that, that doesn't do no good. 
Like I was telling my wife, uh, if the person doesn't got nothing good to say, nothing good going on for themselves, I don't want to kick it with them. Because what can they give me? Exactly. Yeah. They, or what can, what can they provide? Or, or be like, hey, do you need this? You know, if they, they don't got none of that, why should I be hanging out losing my time? Right. Why, why, why should I, uh, I be listening to somebody that doesn't got nothing but nonsense to say? But, uh, yeah, you know, that's one of the uh, key things to do. Uh, another key thing to do is uh, the, don't let the, anything that, that will trigger you to go back into drugs. Drugs always is going to do yeah, the worst. Dr- yeah, drugs are a fucking roadmap for disaster, yeah. man. You know, Especially right now, you find them every corner, you know. Yeah. Until, uh, I, I, you got the whole fentanyl shit going on, too. My a, a question I have, because from experience working with some of like, you know, reentry population, is asking for help. You had that trouble asking for help, or do you ask for help as soon as you got out? Uh, no, I, I look for help uh, after I was lost. <laughs> I was I was really lost, you know. But uh, uh, resources are easy to find, really easy. Especially coming out of prison, you get a lot of resources nowadays. And uh, and if you don't take advantage of them, like most of us do, don't do, you know. So uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna get there. But uh, they should definitely look into resources when you get out. They give you the the, the counselor gives you a lot of stuff for you to work with, and. Uh, if you do uh, take it into consideration, you're definitely going to get there. Um, and if you stop hanging out, you know, if you definitely stop hanging out, yeah. stop uh, doing all the nonsense, yeah, yeah, you're going to get somewhere, you know. But So yeah. so what about the, the homies that, that are blasted like you and like, nah, I can't get a fucking job. I can't do... T- wh- wh- how long lie. have you been working for? That's a lie. Uh, I've been working the, since I, I got out. I start working to to right now. You know, I've been working for I want to say um, about four years. That's right. I'll be working for That's four crazy. years, and uh, if we I had the little clap thing. We would hit yeah. it right now yeah. the clap button. I'll do it. Know? I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a little bit of everything. I've done a warehouse. I did. Uh, I've done dishwasher. I've done. Uh, I've been a cook. To now that I'm working construction, and uh, I think uh, I'll be saying where I aiming for is I'm gonna be a machine operator. That's, yeah, a, that's yeah, gonna be go. my job. I local know. Local twelve. Huh? Local twelve. Uh, yeah. Eventually get in the yeah. local twelve. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So uh, for right now, uh, I know all the machines, all the machines of the field. Um, I like to snoop around, <laughs> and good. I like to you know yeah. have my nose in everything, and that's something that uh, my boss uh, always lets me do. He's like, hey, uh, the plumbers over there, go help them or something. Do this, do that. And so I learned a little bit of everything. I know a little of everything that's going on in the job. I know all the machines on the field. And uh, eventually, uh, that's what I was talking to my uh, boss. I'm going to become a machine operator. So we're talking about good money, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for it, you know. I know the machines. I know what we need to do. Yeah. And why not? You get me? So uh, that's one of the things that I like the most is the machines. Uh, um, it's not that bad, good pay, and uh, it's not a, a long career. So... I definitely gotta go to school so to get certified, but it's nothing major. And uh, soon I'll be there. Oh yeah, man, you could yeah. do it. Hell yeah. yeah. So and I, we kind of talked about this before uh, we started, and I kind of just want to end on that note. Um, you said you were traveling. You were going Hawaii. Hey, I'm glad you touched on that because I, I wanted to ask something. <laughs> yeah, that like, like that's like a final, you know. You were you were going Hawaii and stuff. What does it feel like to be able to say, yo, I, I, I mean, you did. I'm don't take it the wrong way. You did leave the country when you were older, I'm younger. Yeah. But now you, I mean, or the state or whatever. But now you went to like actually take a break, have peace. What was that like? Even like a the like a dream, you yeah. know? That, that's the shit. Like, you sit in the cell on the bunk and you're like. I'm gonna fucking go to Hawaii. You Did know? you ever think yeah. you were gonna go to Hawaii? No. You know what? It's Actually, once uh, I started with my wife for last year, I think it was uh, yeah at the beginning of last year, I was uh, still on parole, and I told my parole, hey, you know what? I wanna take my wife uh, for her birthday for for Hawaii. And he's like, okay, let me see yeah. whatever. I had just uh-huh. came from a violation though, uh-huh. so. He you had just me. came from a violation. Yeah, so he Damn, denied that's me, a nice you know? ass PL to let you yeah. know. <laughs> no, so he denied me. So he, oh. he denied me. So uh, I told my wife, you know, okay, fuck it, you know. So yeah. uh, let's go to Carolina Island. We ran uh, a hotel like over there. Uh, yeah, you know, know but like it was it. actually a surprise because <laughs> I told my wife, hey, you know what, pack uh, when I leave, you know, uh, when yeah, I go. Yeah, romantic. So I, so like I told it, my man. wife, you know, um, well, I'm gonna take it for a week. You know, let's go to Carolina Island, which is a really expensive. Yeah, you know, money goes by super quick over there. So I, uh, we ran everything, hotel, everything. And I uh, take uh, her and my, my daughter, you know, which uh, 
she she be going everywhere with us. So uh, her little age, you know, she's traveling now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I took her, you know, that's how I start. And then I told her, you know what? I promise you, as soon as I get out of uh, approval, we go to Hawaii. Love it. So uh, you told her your wife or your yeah, daughter that my my wife wife. Okay. So I told her next birthday we're going to Hawaii. I should be out of approval. Yeah, sure enough, I was out of parole. I would keep pressing on parole. Hey, I want to get out. I got out of parole, and I, I told my wife, let like, grab the tickets. I gave her a couple G's. I told her, hey, there you go. Gra- grab the tickets, do the uh, hotel, and uh, do, do, give me a day. I give it to the boss, and we go. So yeah. we went, right? <laughs> and uh, once over there, we're like, okay. We, we already went through this island. Now let's fly to the rest of the islands. And real, 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 so when you get there though <laughs> I, I want to know did anybody know stop why. you or ask you bro. like bro the tattoos was that a thing uh no i can imagine it's hawaii they've no. never i'm sh- I, I could again that's just my lack of knowledge because i don't know they probably do have dudes that are tatted up like that over there but you know yeah you see some of them but I, what i do get sometimes it's like people ask me for pictures that's that, fucking right? crazy, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, at uh, times that we go, like, uh, one of my things that my wife probably hates sometimes is a lot of attention that we get. We get somewhere. Yes. And uh, people look at us off the back, like, yeah. either it could be either good or bad, right? But uh, they look at us. And there's people that time come, hey, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, sure. You know, so uh, we'll take a picture, whatever. And uh, yeah, you know, not, nobody asks. They do ask uh, when I go, hey, did it hurt? That's always the common question I get. Did it hurt? Sorry. That's the main question. I always get everywhere I go, a new place. They haven't seen me before. Did it hurt? Which one is the, the first one? And stuff like that. But other than that, uh, I, people, man, for the I, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, you got to start charging, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool, you know? So, um, we start flying around. We went to different islands. Uh, so, the, the ticket we would take, it would be, uh, we leave in the morning and we'll come back late at night. Then we come back to the same hotel. We go to a different island. So we start going by, so we spent it a week over there. It was pretty cool. Um, then after that, like I told my wife, you know what? Uh, let's keep it going, you know? Because we'll be going to all different national national forests and all this. And like, you know what? Let's get out now, you know? And just like a, uh, a week ago, a week, like a week and a half, my wife told me, hey, um, I want to go to this uh, Halloween town, you know, in uh, Oregon. So Hall- um, Halloween town? Yeah, I guess it's where the Halloween uh, is it town the movie? movie. Yeah. Oh my God, so, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm like, okay, get the tickets. So she got the tickets, and uh, we're like, let's go. So I told my boss, hey, uh, can I go this day? And like, oh, go. So I went for it. We went for it. And one once in Oregon. So once again, we see everything, and we're like, oh, fuck, you know, we we're close to Washington. Why not, right? So now let's go to Washington. Damn, bro, you were more romantic <laughs> than I am, bro. You're spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd be like, oh, babe, let's go. Like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, so my wife was like, oh, let's go, you know? And um, and we went. So we went to Washington, Seattle, and, uh, and yeah, so we spent the time there. It was pretty cool, you know? It's really nice. And uh, after that, we went back to Oregon, and from Oregon, uh, we took the trip back, which it was like, what, 18 hours? Uh, and then uh, we came back over here. It was pretty cool, you know. And uh, and we've been to different places like uh, San Francisco and stuff like that. Which uh, now the next trip that we got and or go for uh, March uh, is uh, Japan. So I love that, bro. Yeah. Oh my God, that's yeah. in stone already. Huh? it's in stone already. Yeah. Like you, Japan yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and, and March. That's it. Yeah, and this time because last time we went to Hawaii, uh, just me, the baby, and her. So. We're taking the whole family now, so it's nice, five of us. Bro. It's pretty cool, you know, and uh, that's what I like about uh, life nowadays is uh, we're able to afford it and um, we, we're able to support each other. And you know yeah. what? Let's go. Yeah. And, and we say, let's go. And my wife is the type of, like, she's never going to say no. She's like, let's go. You know, she's always up for an adventure. And um, she always put up with, with the crazy stuff that comes up, you know, and like, let's go, you know, and uh, yeah, we go for it. That's good, yeah. man. That's a that's like fuck serendipity that you guys met and 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 she vibes with you, you vibe with her, and it just works out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, I can say everything is so easy in life because uh, two persons, you know, always leaving. Fuck yeah. yeah you know. God damn, bro. We just yeah. do a whole ass fucking love movie with your shit. Yeah, you know, so, uh, but <laughs> nothing is impossible in life. Nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Nothing love is that. impossible. And now, uh, if you want it, you could get it. Oh yeah. If you work hard for it, you're gonna get there. And uh, no, yeah. no matter past, no matter shit you go through, no matter no tattoos. Yep, I've been all type of stuff, and whatever I wanted to be, I could have been if I wanted to because mm-hmm. uh, I apply for it, and it's not how you look, 
you know, because I, I used to work in a restaurant and I would come out and people will ask for pictures. I remember people asking me. In the me. restaurant? Yeah. They asked me one time to be in a, a clothing brand, uh, which what? it was called. I can't remember. I, oh, I can imagine that, bro. Yeah. Documentaries, yeah. movies, cameos, sure. all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. They, they, music video, podcast. Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> like this one. Yeah. But it, it was cool, you know. So uh, one thing about it was like, you know what? I was kind of like uh, hesitating. But nowadays, I'm more like open to stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm enjoying more of the good or bad attention I get. I take advantage of it. So, like, you know, I'm like, okay, let's do I, it. I guess to give the viewers kind of like a, that feel, if you could describe how you felt knowing, like, doing all this traveling stuff in one word, what word would that be? Uh, I will say uh, uh, joy. A uh, joy oh, yeah. of uh, doing something that I... Uh, that I couldn't do and overcoming what where I where I came from, you know, because uh, what I was before, I would never thought like, hey, I'm gonna be here in ten years from now. Now nah, I probably thought I was gonna be worse, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though I knew probably I was gonna end it up bad, I still didn't care. So I thank God now because um, look where I'm at now. It's just oh, yeah. I keep going up and thank God it keeps going that way, right? Because. Uh, uh, I keep moving up and uh, looking forward to something better and better every day. And that, that's my motivation. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get there because I can't get there. Because there's nothing that's going to hold me back, you know. And that in part. life, it doesn't matter what age you are, you could get there. Just you know? get it. Yeah. Just get it. Just get it. You know, yeah. get it and look for the opportunities. If you don't talk, they won't talk back, you know. Sheesh. And, uh, you know, that yeah. kind of like, brings me to a quote that I just recently read. And we can kind of wrap up on this, too. It was one where... Um, it's a, it's a disgrace. It's not a disgrace to try reaching for your stars, but it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to not have stars to reach to. Yeah. Like God, basically, okay. you feel yeah. me? <laughs> hey, Shakespeare. Not playing it wasn't yeah. Shakespeare, but it's like it's it's you know having goals is not a problem, but yeah. it's it's a disgrace not having goals. Yeah, I think it's even whacker if you don't strive for nothing. Like you yeah. never even made that an attempt. At least make an attempt. You know? Right, yeah. man. Honestly, bro, we really appreciate you being here, and I think. 100 percent your story is, is something more than a lot of people like nobody's ever lived i mean not i mean not that nobody but you know it's a story that not everybody lives through and, and we, we all got different stories you know yeah. and, everybody yep yeah and uh, however we got here that's it doesn't matter you know it's just how can we move forward hell yeah, so, yeah. it's just let's move forward and everybody could do it nowadays it's not the time to be out there and it's better things out there it's good to have money it's good to get paid it's good to be able to afford something out of your pocket and give it to your family and see that that uh, appreciation uh, of uh, you know what you have been supportive to there's that person and and that that's everything you know and I totally encourage everybody to do it because um, in life you know you could live either a long life or a short life you know and if you want the short life you're not gonna experience nothing in life mm -hmm, exactly. you're never gonna get that love and that uh, appreciation and that our responsibility of uh, teaching good things, not bad things, you know. And um, and, and you really yeah. only get one of them, so exactly. you only get one life. So exactly. fucking. I hate saying it, but yolo, bro. Yeah. Yolo. I hate saying it, but yolo. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank y'all for fucking with us, man. Thank you, Edwin. No, yep. T and I signing out, y'all. Yeah. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. If y'all listening, download all the good, good stuff, stuff, man. Thank y'all very much. Y'all have a great day.